Hey guys, what's up, and welcome to the official episode 2 of What If. Now, in the first episode of What If, we took a look at a band who came off a successful debut, was supposed to come out with something else, and completely threw that project away, came up with something else, and to this day, the other thing that they were trying to do, most of, or if not all of the material is lost from that album, I'm talking about Panic at the Disco, releasing Pretty Odd instead of what was supposed to be in Cricket and Clover in 2007. And today we got a pretty similar story. It is a band called Weezer, who in 1994 released the highly successful Blue Album, their most successful album to date. And they were supposed to follow it up around 1996 is when they were going to with a concept album similar to that of Panic at the Disco's, although not similar to both the fact that it was a concept album. And instead, we got Pinkerton. So today, I'm here to tell you um, what if Weezer were to release the space concept album Songs from the Black Hole instead of Pinkerton. And yeah, let's just get off with some history of this lost album first. Come down on the street and So there's a lot to look at here as in December of 1994 all the way of June to 1996 is when um, Weezer was working on their album Songs from the Black Hole. This was supposed to follow up their debut album, the Blue Album. And basically it was supposed to be a science fiction rock opera which expresses Rivers Cuomo's feelings about how he felt about success and how he was so in the middle, he was 50-50 of feeling happy and kind of feeling like, you oh, know, this might not be the life that I want to live, it's, you know, and it would actually only, the album was actually only going to feature three out of the four members of Weezer, that was Rivers Cuomo himself on vocals, guitarist Brian Bell, and bassist Matt Sharp, um, so yeah, um, their drummer didn't show up at any point in time, but this album was also supposed to feature Rachel Harden, who was the lead singer of That Dog, Joan Wasser, who was the lead singer of Dan Builder, and Carl Cook, who was a Weezer collaborator. So, basically, if you want the whole details, it was supposed to take place in the year 2126, and it was a spaceship named Betsy 2. They embark on a mission, and it ends up crash landing on a planet. And the characters, Juan, which is Brian Bell's character, Dondo, which is Matt Sharp's character, Jonas, which is Rivers Cuomo's character, which they also reference that character in the Blue Album with their first song, My Name is Jonas, and I'll get to what that might mean in a minute. Then we have, um, we have Cook, who is the, uh, robot M1, so, yeah, it's, that's basically the crew itself. And basically, Jonas is, basically has mixed feelings about, you know, exploring this planet. While Cook, M1, urges the crew to focus and to, you know, embark on the journey, which is kind of a metaphor of the record label telling Weezer to, hey, try something different, go out of your reach. And it ends up that Cook... Harden and Wasser, uh, their characters all end up getting caught up in this love triangle, and at some point in time, Betsy 2 lands back on Earth, and Cuomo, or Jonas, returns to a simple life of no fame, no nothing, just kind of goes off and just kind of lives his own life. And if you're wondering where Betsy 2 came from, that was taken as a name from Weezer's tour bus. They're one of their first tour buses with the name Betsy, so that's where that came from. Now, all these characters have a meaning, but you gotta figure the state that Rivers Cuomo was in at the time of writing these songs, which I'll get to that in a minute too, the so-called track listing. He was in college at the time, trying to finish out, get a degree, and at this time he was trying to write this big story for this big album, and he was basically just kind of barred, like I said, he was very 50-50 on the success 
of the Blue Album. He was happy that it was getting the recognition and that Weezer was blowing up, but at the same time, he felt like he didn't need or deserved the recognition that him and the band were getting alone. And these characters, Juan and Dondo, which is Bell and Sharp's character, actually is the excited, supposed to represent the excited side of Rivers Cuomo, whereas Jonas, who is played by Cuomo himself, is his doubt of being this big and how he doesn't think it's the best thing for him. And then Laurel and Maria, um, which are the characters played by Hayden and Wasser, are supposed to represent Cuomo's relationships with that of females, so a love relationship in general. So he really gives us his feelings here. Now this track listing is long. I came across a 14 track track listing and then a couple of demos. And the first song on here obviously is called Blast Off. You can tell that's probably just the start of the mission. Then you get the song Who You Call a Bitch, which I'm assuming at around this point is they get into an argument. And then there's a song called Oh Jonas. Then there's Please Remember, Come to My Pod. And then Oh No, That's Not For Me, Tired of Sex, She's Had a Girl, Dude, We're Finally Landing, which is probably them going back on Earth. Now I see, I just threw out the love of my dreams, super friend, you won't get with me tonight, and what is this I find? So basically, <clears throat> once they land after track 9, tracks 10 through 14 seem to be Rivers contemplating of, is this a really a bad thing, or am I just making too much of a big deal out of this and saying, I let this love of my life slip away, I let the success that I had slip away. So, and then there's two un two demos unreleased called Long Time Sunshine and Devotion. Not sure where they're supposed to fall in the album, but those were there too, so I figure I'd mention them. So, yeah, this just seems like an interesting album that would have really have been a step up from... I mean, I love their Blue Album, but would have been interesting to see how this would have turned out. It probably would have been a little bit over an hour long with it being a concept album that tells a story, as most concept albums tend to be at a longer state because a band's trying to experiment more and actually tell you an interesting story. And, yeah, I mean, that's basically just the history of this thing, as in 1996, it was scrapped, and they ended up releasing Pinkerton instead, which garnered decent reviews, not the best, but they went from happy, peppy, kind of nerdy kids to kind of emo lyrics, sadder lyrics in Pinkerton, if you even want to call it that, and that's where it stands now. Come down on the street and dance with me. I'm a guy like you, so please. Hello, I'm here, I'm waiting. So basically, my thoughts were. What would have happened if Weezer would have released Songs from the Black Hole instead of Pinkerton? I still think it would have done as well as Pinkerton as people were anticipating, you know, that follow-up to a highly successful album and a debut nonetheless, so people wanted to hear more. And to be honest with you, I'm torn into two on this one, because I think this would have been one that critics really would have ate up because they would have loved the effort put in by the band. And from what I've heard from the little songs that are out there, that the, these tracks just seem to be fun and, you know, really would have kept me into the whole story thing. It would have had me figuring out, like, oh, no, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen here? Whereas the fans, I still think it'd be the same as Pinkerton. Would have been disappointed by it. This isn't the Weezer that we heard from the first album. What are they doing? They're completely taking a different direction. And, frankly, I just think it would be... It would fall in the same realm as Pinkerton. I just... I can't say it would be worse or better. Because, at the same time, I don't know what the fans would have liked. I... Less, of ha less than half of this album is only out there. There's only like five or six songs of these 14 or 15 that are actually out into the world today. So my conclusion to this would be, had they released songs from the black hole, it would have sold probably just like Pinkerton would have, and it probably would have garnered great critic reviews, but a bad response from fans just because of the change. But now that it's kind of just not a thing, this album has been unreleased and there's no plan of releasing it, 
Um, this has been one of the albums that's been on a list of unreleased albums that we would kill to hear. And I'm not going to lie, I would have loved to have seen what this thing would have turned out to be. Would it have been better than Pinkerton? Would it have been worse than Pinkerton, you know? Because at that point in time, after the Blue Album, how much higher are you supposed to go at that point? You know, it was a highly successful debut. And at that point, fans had to have probably started to realize this band probably isn't going to release something like that for a while or ever again. And that's pretty much when reality sank and when Pinkerton came out. And as much as we might want to hear this album, it's it's never going to happen. Like I said, there's songs out there, but I don't think Rivers Cuomo has ever, other than demo tracks off of his solo stuff, released any like official songs off of the album, and there's no plan of releasing it in the future. So yeah, that does it for What If Episode 2, the official Episode 2. Um, I had Episode 1, which would be What If Panic at the Disco released Pretty Odd instead of, or Cricket and Clover instead of Pretty Odd, and Episode 1.5, a shorter episode, which is more opinionated for me, which is What If Paramore Had Broken Up uh, after the Far Brothers left the band in 2011. So, which you can click up here to see those. So yeah, anyway, tell me in the comments below what do you think would have happened if Weezer released songs from the Black Hole instead of Pinkerton. Would it have been better? Would it have been worse? Would it have reached the heights of the Blue Album? Would it have, would it have just, would it have garnered the success that Pinkerton had in general, do, do you think that this would have been the better album over Pinkerton? Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Please remember to like and subscribe. Catch me next time for episode 3 of What If, which would be What If the Master Tapes for Green Day's Cigarettes and Valentine's Were Never Stolen, and we got that album instead of American Idiot. Anyway, catch you guys next time.